All right, uh, sorry the live video started a little late tonight. We had some de technical difficulties, but we've got it all set up now. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, for anybody who didn't catch the live last week, every Wednesday night at 7.30 uh, Eastern Time, I will be doing an Ask the Trainer about a different topic. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can email me at bambi at com, and I can maybe, you know, if I get enough questions about a certain topic, I can do that topic the next time. Otherwise, I'll just kind of come up with a topic on my own, and we'll discuss that when the time comes. Um, so again, for people that who had, didn't see the last one, I'm Bambi. I'm the head trainer here at Two Paws Up, Inc. Um, I've been in the pet industry for about four years now. I did go to the Star Mark Academy for Professional Dog Trainers, and I got my certificate there. Um, oops, sorry. So I am a certified canine and training specialist. And I've been working with dogs, uh, for, like I said, for four years, and I grew up around them, so I've had quite a experience with them. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it, since I am a bit late anyway. Um, today's topic is boredom, canine boredom. Um, so we're going to start off with how to recognize boredom. Uh, a lot of people see, you know, boredom pretty easily when it comes to like destructive behavior and stuff like that. But there are a lot of different signs that you might not realize is boredom or you might think it's something else. Um, unfortunately with dogs, you know, certain behaviors could mean a lot of different things and you have no idea which one it is it, it's going to be, but... <laughs> Um, you know, whenever you have all these behaviors together, you might, it's a little bit easier to kind of figure out the cause of them. Um, so like I said, destruction, very, uh, very common behavior, um, when it comes to bored dogs, you know, you come home and they've torn up your couch, their bed, your socks, that kind of thing. Um, digging outside, especially for dogs like terriers and things like that. Uh, digging is a sign of boredom. Um, a lot of times it's just, you know, something else for them to do. And a lot of times whenever they have all this pent up energy, most of the time they're going to just, they're going to entertain themselves. <laughs> they're not going to care about your new socks or your new couch. They're going to care about what's fun for them. There are certain behaviors that are called OCD behaviors. Now these ones, a lot of people don't recognize as OCD behaviors or boredom behaviors because, you know, it's cute or it's not destructive and it's not um, a problem necessarily to you. But things like spinning around in a circle, while it is cute if your dog is spinning around in a circle all the time, that is a sign uh, that they're not being fulfilled in their life. Um, actually, when a dog spins around in a circle, it releases dopamine in their brain and it makes them happy and it makes them want to do it a lot more. Um, chasing their tail, another thing. Um, same with the spinning, it's, it releases that dopamine and it's something for them to just do and do and do and do, but it's not healthy for them and it's not just a cute little fun thing that they're doing, it's actually a sign of OCD. Then there's also things with certain breeds like herding dogs. Um, when they're herding your children or herding small animals or other dogs in the household, that can be a sign that they're bored, they're not fulfilled because they don't have another job. So they just kind of result to that, you know, that instinctual behavior of herding whenever they have nothing else to do. So the next part is how to counteract that boredom. So this one is, there's a lot of different things that you can do, so I'm gonna to touch on some of those things that you can do. Um, everyone knows physical exercise, you know, walk your dog every day, that kind of thing. But that is a small part of it, and I just wanna to touch on it for just a second. A lot of people don't walk their dogs if they have like a big backyard. You know, they'll say, okay, I let my dog out into the backyard all day. He has plenty of exercise. I don't need to walk him. He has all that space to run around if he wants. Well, the thing is, if you actually sat there and watched your dog, is he actually running around and running around and running around all day? Or is he just sitting there? Is he just laying down? Is he digging in the backyard? Is he just waiting to come back inside and waiting for you to do something with him? Just because they have a lot of space, it doesn't mean they just want to run around and, and have nothing else to do all day. Um, and they're not getting that exercise. Excuse me. Um, you can also do stuff like fetch, um, tug of war, uh, flirt poles, which are kind of like kind of like those cat toys where it has has a little thing on the stick and you kind of bounce it around. They actually have those for dogs, and those are really awesome with working dogs and dogs with a really high prey drive. 
Um, usually it's like a piece of leather attached to a pole and you kind of have them jump around for it and that's really awesome for building your dog's muscles and for tiring them out a lot. Um, but the most important thing when it comes to boredom especially is actually mental stimulation. Now unfortunately this thing gets overlooked a lot with you know pet owners because they just don't know and uh, you know uh, four years ago I had no idea what this was either and I didn't realize that dogs needed to do it either. So I completely understand it if this is something that's completely new to you and you haven't even thought about this before. But just like with people, uh, mental stimulation is extremely important with dogs. And actually, if you tire out their brain, it's worth a lot more than just tiring out their body at the end of the day. And it helps them calm down a lot. It's a lot better for your couches and your shoes and everything like that and just the, the peace in the household. Um, some of the ways to mentally stimulate your dog is interactive toys. Um, Starmark brand has a lot. Um, uh, actually, let me go get mine real quick. I totally forgot to grab it. Sorry. So this is my favorite and my dog's favorite toy. It is called a bob a lot. It's by Starmark. Um, so with this guy, it's all chewed up because my dog really enjoys this. With this guy, you unscrew this top here. And there's a little hole that you can put kibble or treats. I actually really like to feed my dog with this. Um, just if I don't have time to train her throughout the day too much and she just needs some more stimulation I feed her through this so that way she's still doing something um, and then at the bottom there is a little door you can make it easier or harder for the food to get out and basically the goal is that they bop this thing around until they knock the food out now this is also designed that they can't just knock it over um, it will stand upright the whole time and this is really on there so it's a lot unless they chew the whole cap off they're not going to get it out of the top either so i love that toy that's called the bob a lot from starmark um starmark also has a lot of different interactive toys they make treats that actually fit into their toys as well um big hard treats and chews that you can put in there and make it a lot more fun for the dog and then um Another thing that you can do besides just giving interactive toys, feeding your dogs out of those, feeding it with a Kong even. Uh, most people have a Kong in their house. Getting some wet food and some kibble in there and putting it in there really helps them out as well and is a really great way to counteract some boredom. Um, you can also do scent games. Now when people think of like scent work and stuff, you know, you think of search and rescue dogs, uh, bomb detection dogs, narcotics dogs, that kind of thing. But there is um, a sport called scent work that you can do with like essential oils and stuff too. But you can just kind of make up little games at home. You don't have to actually get into scent work to fulfill your dog. You can play like a hide the toy, hide the treat around the house game. Uh, start out with like letting them see the toy, putting it somewhere really easy where they can see it, and then telling them to go get it. When they get it, you know, it's a big whole thing, a reward. Um, they get to play with them, or if it's a treat, they get to eat it and then just gradually make it harder from there. Um, that really actually works their mind and works their nose, and their nose is a huge, huge part of them. Um, they use that thing all the time, and dogs have an amazing sense of smell, and they, especially like scent hounds and stuff, um, obviously like they're gonna use that nose, so that's really fulfilling them whenever you do like stuff like scent games. Um, uh, another thing that people don't think about very often, you know, most people just kind of leave their dog toys laying out and then, you know, their dog gets bored of them so they have to go buy more toys and it's like, why doesn't my dog want to play with his toys anymore? Um, honestly, just like I know with children, this is a thing too. Um, dogs will get bored of toys if they're just sitting out there. You can rotate your toys in and out, you know, have one or two out at a time and then hide the rest in the closet for a week or two and then rotate two more out in the next week, two more out the next week, that kind of thing, and it keeps them fresh in the dog's mind, and it keeps them actually fun and entertaining. So you don't have to go out and buy a fortune of toys every week 
or every month you can just rotate out the same ones that you have now training also really really stimulates their dog your dog um you know dog trainers obviously i'm a dog trainer i train my dogs every day or at least i try to um even small sessions just to work their brain and keep their skills sharp now you don't have to be a dog trainer to teach your dog a couple commands and you don't have to be a dog trainer to mentally stimulate them enough in the training um, even just working on your basic obedience, if your dog already knows sit, just work on sit for 10-15 minutes a day. Um, that can help stimulate their mind. Or you can do trick training. You know, go online, find a trick that you want to teach your dog to do, and then do that. Because trick training really works out their brain because they have to really think about what you want them to do. Um, especially with the clicker. If I might might talk about clicker training in uh, one of these videos at some point, but trick training is super, super stimulating for your dog. Uh, don't do it for like 30 minutes or anything. Do it for about 10 minutes, you know, minimum, um, because that really tires their brain out. And, you know, the more that you do it, if they get tired, then they're probably not going to do it as well. But, you know, do it for about 10 minutes at a time. Take an hour break. Do another 10-minute trick training session. Just simple things like that can really... Um, counteract that boredom for your dog and you can also get into sports you know agility I do agility with my dog Cujo um, she loves it it builds her confidence it keeps her energized and it actually helps tire her out a little bit and it's really fun for the trainer as well you can do uh, disc dogs you know diving dogs um, you know just get into different sports there are you know clubs out there that you can look into and you don't have to compete for it you can just join a club, you know, learn how to do that sport with your dog and just do it for fun. Um, you can also give your dogs jobs. Now, with different breeds, they're going to have different instincts that they do. Like I said earlier, um, herding dogs might hurt your children, um, hurt your small animals, hurt your cats, that kind of thing if they don't have a job. And terriers might dig. So with those examples, you know, having a job for your dog can also mentally, uh, you know, stimulate them and counteract that boredom. You can create like a box in your backyard for your terrier, um, fill it with sand and let them actually dig out of that. You know, just that one area that they know that they can dig in. And you can even hide toys and treats and things like that in the sand so they'll be more motivated to keep doing it right there. And then um, there are different herding games that you can do with your border collies, your other herding dogs like that. Um, online, I've seen several herding games where you can use like uh, exercise balls, things like that in your backyard and have your dogs herd those so that way they're less inclined to herd your children. So there are a ton of, ton of different ways to counteract your dog's boredom and that's what I listed there was just a few things. Um, just making sure I don't forget anything. Yeah, I got everything on my list. Um, like I said, there are a ton of ways to counteract that and to work with your dog and really fulfill them every single day. And it's really not complicated. You don't need to take your dog on an hour-long walk, you know, an hour-long run just to tire them out. Um, you can take them on the 10-minute walk and then do, you know, 30 minutes of games or training, you know, or but all in between, um, you know, 10 minutes of training. 10 minutes of scent game and then give them their dinner in a babala or a kong. It's really uh, not too hard on you. It's not going to take up a lot of your time to help your dog out when mentally stimulating them. Um, and so I hope that this live helps a lot of people and it can help you have a little bit more of a peaceful home and your dogs can stop chewing up your couches and things like that. So um, if you guys have any questions for me about what we discussed today, or um, any questions you want me to talk about in another live video, you can either comment or you can email me at bambi at 2 and I will see you guys next week. Thank you.